เจ้าหลวงปู่จะเป็นจนนะสิกุติเนจังเอจะกึเป็นมหาพันธ์ชั้นเจนดอลล์ยารุจิลินโดวันที่กอบเปล่าเจ้าให้ผ่านเจ้
Sorry, I have to put my eyes glass. I would like that um, to request to the U.S. government and the the world that would love freedom and democracy to make pressure to the law communist government and to the uh, Vietnamese communist government to comply with the SR 240 that already ratified by U.S. Congress. It also that I would like to request the U.S. government to make pressure to the Lao, gov Lao communist government also that to ask all Vietnamese troops, all military and political advisors, all civilians, all laborers to get out of Laos. The Vietnamese, they should stop stealing Lao natural resources and stop stealing lumbers from Laos. And based on 1973 accords, Vietnam has no right, no business whatsoever to be in Laos. And also, I want the American government to make pressure to the Lao government to stop ethnic cleansing because ethnic cleansing is not happened just yesterday. It happened in Laos since 1975 after we lost the war. I'm sorry because I say it different from General Pao. We won the war. It also that they should stop human rights violation and then to restore peace, freedom, and democracy for Laos. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite sure that together we can accomplish our goal. And please, I beg you, don't let them down, these three great leaders. Help them and support them until we can accomplish our goal in one day we can go home and enjoy liberty, freedom, democracy in our country. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests and fellow veterans, on behalf of the Lao veteran of America, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, all of you, for your participation at this very important event. I would like to extend my deepest, sincere thank to Grant McClure and Philip Simis for their hard work to make this very important event possible. And I also want to thank all fellow veterans and community members for your support and participation in this historical event. Senator and Representative, we, the Law Veteran of America member and family who come across the country, get to get here again at the Vietnam Memorial today to thank you for your past effort and support to the Law Veteran of America. At this very important occasion, we would like to ask your continuing effort and support to pass the Hmong Veteran Naturalization Act of 1999. So our aging Lao veteran and Hmong veteran will become U.S. citizen. We, the Lao veteran of America member and family, strongly urge you to continue to take a leadership role to pass the Hmong Veteran Naturalization Act of 99 at this time. Again, thank you for your participation at, into this event. 
Thank you. I feel very intimidated to be here addressing you after General Van Powell has spoken. I'm sure you know, as I do, that he's one of the great speakers in the world. And when I hear him speak, I'm ready to go off to war, any war, as long as I'm under his command. It's really, truly a very great privilege to be here with you. You are a great body of men, great body of soldiers. The time I spent in your company in Laos is one of the great times of my life, and I'm grateful at having had the opportunity to do it. I'll say a few words with you, to you about the memory that I hold of my association with you during those war years, 1971 to 73. I worked very closely with General Vang Pao throughout that period. We were comrades in arms. I still feel we're comrades in arms. We're even brothers in arms because we served together in a great cause, a cause which I still consider to be very great. I, did a, I had the easy job, of course. You had the hard job. You did the dirty work. You took the casualties, heavy casualties. But you gave, it, you gave hell to the North Vietnamese, and they know it very well. We Americans should remember that the North Vietnam's invasion of Laos began long before we Americans got into it. When we got there, you had already been bearing the brunt of the invasion for many years. At first, the war was a very light, skillful guerrilla war. Later on, as the war in Vietnam grew more intense, it became very heavy in, in Laos to match the Vietnam War. The response to all that uh, intensification was spearheaded, as you know, by yourselves, led by General Vang Pao. For a man whose military experience began 20 years earlier in the French Army, he went on to become a major general on the basis of his success in combat. He often contended, he told me, that everything he learned about war, he learned from the North Vietnamese. <clears throat> I think in the process, he also taught the North Vietnamese a few things about war himself. The general was also a very a born diplomat, as well as a, a skilled commander. During the times when the Vietnamese in, in the late 71, early 72 were pushing hardest against us, moving very far to the west, even threatening the royal capital at Luang Prabang, there were many, many senior Americans there who thought it was all over. Within a matter of days or weeks, they will overrun us and we'll be run out of the place. They expected General Vang Pao's army to be defeated, but they didn't know you as well as I know you. What happened in the face of that? Well, once the rainy season began, early 72, what did he do? He began a series of counterattacks that pushed the North Vietnamese back to the, to the east, ran them all the way back to the eastern rim of the Plain de Jars, and he held them at bay there despite repeated attempts to break out. It was a dog-eat-dog -dog contest all the way, and you won. Now, as, we, as you all know, throughout that struggle, uh, the U.S. Air Force played a tremendously important role. Also, the U.S. combat commanders in, in South Vietnam became very well acquainted with what you were doing in Laos. They became particularly well acquainted with General Vang Pao, and he earned great respect from them. General Creighton Abrams, whom I'm sure you've heard of, General John Vogt, General John Vesey, who was with us in Laos, he supplied our bullets and bombs. I remember General Abrams in particular, he came over to uh, Long Jiang to see General Vang Pao, 1972. General Abrams had a great feeling for, for the general because General Abrams needed BDA to give us the air support that we needed. General Vang Pao said, General Abrams liked PDA, I give him good PDA, and he did. But we Americans here at home have got to remember that it was more than just a military struggle. We have to remember not only the soldiers in uh, Laos, Hmong and Lao and others fought the war, the societies, the civil societies fought and suffered grievously. You were, their society was uprooted, land was overrun, Refugees were the thousands. People died, children died, old people died, every. Uh, we owe a debt not just to the army, but to the entire society of Laos, the Hmong. Nobody ever gave up then, you never gave up. The bravery of the Hmong people showed through day in, day out, at times when some things seemed very dark indeed. And then, of course, when 1975 came around, 
the disillusionment that you all felt we shared with you. It seemed to you, I know, that your old comrades were deserting you in 1975 when the United States left Southeast Asia. But fortunately, that tide turned when you all arrived over here as welcome guests in the United States. And you've taken a new life up here as Americans. Just as we should be grateful to you for the loyalty and the bravery you showed us during the war, the indispensable support you gave us in a common cause, I think we should say, I am happy to say, we're equally happy to see you take your place beside us here today as fellow American citizens. And as everyone else has said before you today, I hope and pray that the two bills that are going through Congress today will carry their course out successfully, and you'll be able to take your lives up as, as American citizens behind us and make a civil contribution to the future of the United States as you made a military contribution to the, to the cause we all supported. We are grateful to you. I'm personally grateful to you. I hold you deeply with respect and love and reverence in my heart. As I said last night, I salute you all. God bless you. It was one thing for the Americans to intervene in Kosovo because there were atrocities committed against the people who lived there. But in the case of the Hmong and other ethnic groups that fought with the Americans, we had a loyal and long-standing relationship. Why didn't the United States do something about the ethnic cleansing in Laos when it began in 1975 and continues until this day? <laughs> Yeah, So I suggest that after we win the two bills that are before Congress, let us make it our next task to call upon Congress to do something about the, the problems of human rights, police state, no freedom for anyone, particularly the minorities in Laos. <laughs> อ่าปานอ๋อได้เปียวนอตรงนี้จ๋าตัวพวกอเมริกาเต้นนอก็ตกใจนี่อ่าขออ่านี่นอยอลาวานึงอเมริกาเนาะเตี้ยนี่จ
Congressman,天,啊,他那本,也叫写中差了。Since 三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十三十